Hello and welcome to Electric Sheep Season 2, Episode 4. My name is Paul Andrews and I'm joined in the studio by Carl Sykes. Hello. And Elizabeth Jones. Hello. And our very special guest this week is Don Parker, who is the Senior Lecturer for Advertising and Design. Hi. So what we'll be doing is we'll talk to Don a little bit later on. Um, we'll be finding out kind of what he does in the day job and any kind of technologies that he uses to get the job done. Uh, but before we do that, Carl, what have you been up to this week? Well, uh, th- th- I've struggled a little bit this week because I've actually just come back from holiday. So uh, so I've, I've kind of just been playing catch up on emails and the like. But uh, what, what I thought I'd talk about this week is an article that I, I read online. I had a chat with Elizabeth about this earlier and she mm. kind of, vaguely recognise the yeah. article as well um, and in fact you guys in the, in the room might do too um, essentially it's an article by a guy called Paul Miller um, mm-hmm. who's a tech writer for The Verge um, mm-hmm. and his, his article is titled I'm Still Here Back Online After a Year Without the Internet um, essentially what Paul did is that around about the beginning of 2012 mm. um, he, he'd had enough essentially he'd had mm. enough of constantly being bombarded by emails and Facebook and whatever else so he decided just to remove himself from the internet in mm. its entirety um, and his plan originally was that he was going to cut himself off from the world quit his job mm-hmm. and go and live with his parents and play computer games and that was about it sign me up <laughs> absolutely absolutely no, hang on I was impressed by the point until he said live with his parents yeah. I know I know it was a, it was a money saving scheme clearly oh, right, okay. but, but, but what actually no happened yeah no not, not quite not as far as I, I can read from between the lines anyway but but essentially what happened was that while he was mulling over this idea um, mm. The Verge which is the, the sort of com- company he, he wrote for actually said well look we'll pay you to write weekly articles for us mm about what life's like with no internet access so so he was obviously over the moon about yeah. that because he got paid to do it and and play his games as well so so essentially what he did is he, he swapped his he, he did the reverse of what paul did which is he swapped his smartphone for like an old <laughs> over the hills yeah. crappy phone um i don't know if anybody out there knows but paul's got a new smartphone and essentially what he did is he removed himself completely he unplugged all of his cables he shut down his facebook account wow. and wiped himself off from the world um and and he, he kind of saw himself as like a sort of, sort of pioneer venturing mm. out into the world of it's like Robinson Crusoe. It was, it was. It was the way he describes it. It's really, really quite, quite exciting. He's, he's like thinking, I'm going to go out and buy paper maps to find my way around <laughs> and read real books and go play frisbee in the park. And it's, it's great. And, and as, as he writes this article, which was only published in, in March 2013, and actually, mm. as he's, as he's ri- written this article, he is now back online after a year of, yeah. of being offline. Um, and he, he starts off by saying that you know it's all very new and very exciting. And he, he did go to the park and play frisbee and, and read books and go and meet friends and all this sort of stuff yeah but very very quickly found that sort of boredom set in um and kind of a lack of stimulation mm-hmm. because he had all this stuff he could do but actually he just couldn't really be bothered to do any of it yeah. so he very quickly found that the paper books that he was going to read just sat on a side in the in the walk cupboard mm-hmm. and they weren't read and all these friends that he wanted to catch up with and go and meet he suddenly found that you know, when he was a bit younger and he and he, the internet wasn't around or mm-hmm. whatever it might be, um, he he used to be a little bit kind of awkward in these situations. Yeah. He'd go out with groups of people, and he very quickly found that that set back in again. Mm-hmm. Um, and he and he wasn't that keen on going out and meeting groups of friends. So he'd find long periods of time he'd be sat on his own, sometimes mm-hmm. days on his own in his yeah. house, yeah. not seeing anybody. And he makes a, a joke. Maybe it's a little bit sort of apocryphal, but he says um, it got to the point where his parents would send his sister around just to check he was still alive because they hadn't <laughs> heard from him in days. Um, and, and one of the one of the great little stories he mentions is that he was really excited about getting real mail Mm-mm. rather than emails so he opened up a post box mm-hmm. uh, and with his articles that were being published on the verge they gave his po box and people could write to him yeah and he was really excited that he'd go down every couple of days and he'd have a post box full of mail that he could read mm-hmm. through and then really quickly realized he'd have to write back to these people actually sit down and write to them yeah. and it's amazing how quickly the novelty wore off mm-hmm. and it got to the point where he just wouldn't reply to anybody because it was just too much hassle to do it. <laughs> so it's really interesting. And he basically says that he, he expected to come out of this this enlightened man by distancing himself from mm. the internet. But actually, it, it didn't really work that way. And he enjoyed some of the parts of it. And he enjoyed, you know, kind of the bit of distance from emails and inboxes mm. and whatever else. But actually it didn't turn out the way he'd hoped it would turn out. And there's a nice little quote at the end, which I wish I liked and mm. I've written down. So um, he basically says, the internet isn't an individual pursuit. It's something we do with each other. The internet is where people are, mm. which I quite liked. And I really liked that yeah. quote. So I just thought I'd bring it up as something I've read. And I don't know if anybody's picked no, up on anything that I've said really in it. It's really interesting but, because oh. the arranging to see people is definitely something that I do always do on the internet. Like mm. yeah. pretty much every social thing I ever do with my friends, we've all talked about 
when and where on the internet mm. first. I've yeah. never phoned people to like arrange a meeting since I was about 14 or something. Absolutely, I've yeah. never been a grown up without the internet and I do not know how people had social lives. <laughs> <laughs> my, my thing, sorry, is, is how old is the guy? Um, he was 26 when he started, so he's 27 so he's now, so he's really young, by right? Elizabeth's age. Yeah, so he'd have never done, like, tried to organise things without mm. the no. internet, no, so you don't know what it was <laughs> no. like. How did you yeah. do it? And it, was, well, and it was, I, am, I am of an age, but I can say that for anybody who's listening, I don't care. I'm, tell 40, us, tell I'm 44 and I'm feeling like granddad. <laughs> I can call it granddad. Don remembers when all this were fields. Yeah, and I do, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, I think I do. Um, yeah, that, that's, I find that interesting mm. because I disengaged from the internet for the last year. Mm. I, I don't, I'm not Facebook, Twitter, mm. uh, anything really. In fact, mm. even the website is deliberately just left for... Yeah. Mm. For what now a year, uh, and as soon as I've done what I've got to do, I'm, I'm back on it. Yeah. And so I disengaged from it. Uh, I don't have a television. Right. No, you, I remember you mm. saying, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I do have a console. Mm. And I do have. I do have the internet, so I mm. use those. Mm. But um, I haven't missed it. I must admit. Right. Okay. Um, I find it uh, quite intrusive. It's the organisation of it. I think you need to get involved. Yeah. Depends how deep you go in. I'm co- when I get involved with it, I get into it deeply and try and connect everything up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you've got that, the kind of avalanche of stuff. Oh, volumes of mm. like and, yeah things coming through. Like every morning when I wake up and I like to check Twitter, and I cannot get to the bottom of my Twitter feed. Like since I would have checked it, like before where I went to sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like eight hours worth of tweets. You yeah. can't get through yeah. it. No. Yeah. And that that's to me the thing. I think this guy did it in a different way, but it's that volume of of information. Mm. And I think you know when you say like jokingly or not, like how did you deal with that before? It's like I don't, I'm not sure. I think I have, you know, a very small group of true friends, mm. Mm. and I think everybody really does. And once you take yourself off the internet, you know who they are. Yeah, well, they're the ones yeah. who actually phone you up. Mm. Which, like, yeah. It would be quite difficult to find. Yeah. I guess it and would I've be harder now, that. though, because his friends would expect to do it online. Like they'll still be arranging stuff on Facebook, and it's just him that's not on there. He's Whereas that annoying guy they've got to go <laughs> out of their way to get in touch with, isn't he? <laughs> I have my hand <laughs> yeah, I, I know one of those people. <laughs> yeah, that'd be me. Yeah, yeah. I, but so I think it's a really interesting experiment. Didn't they do something a few years back uh, where a, a reverse of that, I think about 10 years ago, where a guy tried to live on the internet only and he sort of locked himself in a caravan? Yeah, oh, yeah, and ordered food yeah. in yeah. and yeah. did yeah. his See banking. How, and, 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 and that's what, 10 years ago, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I reckon you could be a lot closer to doing it now. Yeah. Very, very possibly, yeah, yeah. If you think I'm trying to think, what, years, what would you not be able to do? I think that's, that's, a yeah. term, that, that's the next, whoever the company, what was the name, The Verge? The Verge was the the, uh, the place that the article is written, and obviously we'll put links to that mm. on the, on the yeah, site yeah. so people can have a read of it. I, but, I think um, this guy should now do it the opposite way around, so if he does listen to this, I challenge you personally to <laughs> lock yourself in a room for how long did he do it? Uh, just uh, about, about a year and a bit, I think. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be yeah. less pleasant. <laughs> it probably would be less pleasant. The podcast yeah. has just turned into Rocky IV. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yes. I've already challenged you. <laughs> I must break you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, interesting article, like I say, so Perhaps um, you know anyone who's yeah, interested, who's listening, yeah. drop us a line if you've got a point to make on it, and we'll we'll bring that up at some point. So. Brilliant, mm. fantastic. So Elizabeth, um, how's your week been? What have you been up to? Um, well, I've just been doing pretty much the same as last week. So I wanted to talk about just an app that I mm-hmm. had discovered, which mm-hmm. is pretty much the exact opposite of what we've just been talking about. This is about making sure you can stay connected to all your things. Okay. Um, this is an app called, well, it's a website and an app called AirDroid. Mm-hmm. So this is just for Android users, obviously by the name. Mm-hmm. Um, and it connects your phone to your computer via the web sort of thing and Wi-Fi. Um, so that if you are in another room or you've left your phone at home and you've gone to work and you need to check your messages, see if anyone's phoned you, Mm -hmm. you hook up to your AirDroid account and Mm. you can access your phone. So you install the app on the phone or your tablet and then you log on to the website, make sure you're connected, so you hook up your account and then you can just see your phone desktop, essentially. Mm, Access all your apps, manage them, uninstall them, check what data they're using, close them down, check your messages, typed uh, messages and things. Um, You can check your phone log. You can make phone calls. Right. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like but you, without... don't make, you don't make phone calls. You well, no, it's no good mm. for you, Elizabeth. Mm. <laughs> no. You said earlier you don't. I don't make phone calls. <laughs> no, but I mean to arrange social events. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. 
It sounds really interesting. It, it sounds, sounds a little like bit, the future. Yes, it does sound a bit like the future. I guess, I guess the key... You the send key... ravens north of the wall? Is that, <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> I'm sure, well, by the sounds of it, it can do pretty much anything. So, yeah. I mean, the key, I guess the key test here is, Liz, is, is it something you think that you would use? Yes, well, I, as I was reading of it? finding it, I hadn't used it. Okay. But I read about it about a week ago mm. and then just sort of popped into my head today as something to do and as I was looking at it I just thought well I'm getting it now because one of the great things is if you lose your phone Mm -hmm. like leave it somewhere random you can get log onto the site and use GPS to find it down to like you know Google Maps sort of level so like within a street or so yeah Um, and then if it's like been stolen you can't get it back you can remotely wipe all your data Ah. Can I can I just hear as a as a the probably the only iPhone user in the room? Just no, no, I'm an we, iPhone user as well. Yeah, got, got that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm assuming there is an equivalent on iPhone. This has existed for box. a while. Out of the box. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm here to be irritating. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you said yes. Uh, find my iPhone. There's a similar thing. Mm. Yeah. But uh, whether it's as connected as what you do, I'm not sure. I I've no idea. I I was going to look one up and then I ran out of time. And as I don't have an iPhone. <laughs> it's quite good. Yes. It's quite good. It's quite good. No point in looking at me. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. well, I did get in trouble by knowing someone else's access code and then start to follow them, and that was Brilliant. like. I thought this is morally wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's very it weird. So much fun. Because yeah. <laughs> it is like, okay, I can do everything with my phone without actually having my phone mm. on me. That's very strange. Yeah. Like. Which well, actually, do you know, because I, I I don't have an Android phone. I mean, we've got an Android device because we've got the Nexus yeah. Seven. But actually, what I'd be really interested in doing is in about two or three podcast time getting Liz to talk about this same subject again mm. but having used it for a bit yeah. to mm. see how it worked because yeah. unlike a lot of the stuff we talk about there's you know a lot of the, the apps or, or sites whatever we talk about it's the sort of thing where you might use it once in a, in a while but this sounds like something you yeah. could use well, a lot of very people regularly who so. do use it say that it's it's really handy for not even if you if the phone is at home you know you can have the phone next to you but you yeah. want to do file transfer you don't have to get the usb cable out you don't have to do it over your data or whatever mm-hmm. it just does it over the wi-fi so you can remotely manage your files you can listen to music that's on your phone or get a document that's on your phone mm. off onto your computer mm. and do all that sort of stuff or you want to type a text and you don't want to use the tiny touch screen yeah. go on your facebook mm-hmm on a big screen I know you've got the Facebook but you know whatever you want to do without using that tiny screen yeah I, th- it, I think it'll be it's brilliant for people so long as they're happy to put that trust in giving everything yes. over to mm. something that's a lot of stuff yeah. to give over to something isn't it I think a lot of people yeah. might think that now so. I'm not sure what AirDroid runs on if it like it obviously it runs on Android but like if they use their own system mm. there is an alternative if all you want is the phone and text stuff there's an alternative called phonex ph right um Mm. that just does the phone and text bit and they run via google and facebook authentication so you log in with those accounts and stuff so that you're not giving any data to like Mm. any sort of central server i think there's one called mighty text as well which again is just a text um, type thing you can send text from your desktop and you know um, the the other thing that just kind of like popped into my brain then when you're talking about transferring files, there's a fab little app and it's on both um, iOS and Android called Bump. Yeah. Yes. And I've got that. yeah, I mean, originally it started out as a way of people kind of um, passing kind of business cards to another, but they've launched this feature now where if you go to the Bump website and you bump on your phone, mm. you've got a file on your phone, mm-hmm. you bump it on the spacebar of your computer, and it automatically transfers the files from your phone. To your computer, no cables. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't. Okay. I, I was trying to figure out how they do it, but I was. I was trying. I was. I was basically, I looked like a crazy person because I was there for about ten minutes giggling, smacking your phone, smacking my phone against the keyboard. <laughs> and normally but, it's your head you bang against yeah. the keyboard, so that was quite. Well, normally I wrap my face in bubble wrap and just roll it across the keyboard. But 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 yeah, it, it's really good, um, and I was really impressed yeah. by that. I wasn't aware of that feature. Yeah, so it's, that's, it's, that's, it's kind of that that one's quite new because right. it, it was this business card type thing. But yeah, AirDroid is fab. Fantastic. It's really good. Well, there's loads of options that people can choose them if they, you know, no matter wh- what device they've got, essentially, I think, yeah. or how much or how little they want to interact. There's mm. sounds like about 10 or 15 things we've chucked into the ring already yeah. <laughs> can <laughs> do that job. But maybe not. It, it almost sounds as if that kind of pulls all the other yes, stuff together. Yes, there's lots of things it? that do similar bits, but uh, yeah. AirDroid have just, they're, they're on AirDroid 2 now. Right. Where you go to download it and they've just released the new features, which is because previously it had to be on the same Wi-Fi system. So it was more just using your phone. Yeah. Um, like on a bigger screen yeah. 
but now it's like you can remotely access it, which is much more handy. Mm. Yeah, that sounds great. That's very good. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll 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 turn round to to Paul now as oh. our final <laughs> part of the round robin this week and say, Paul. Yes. What would you like to talk about this week? Um, I want to talk about a website called iBuildApp.com. Okay. It's, um, it is a free service. They've got paid for accounts as well, but it's a free service that lets anyone build smartphone and tablet apps. Right. For okay. nothing. Yeah. Um, and it's it's the best one I've tried because all of the other ones. They go, oh, you can be, build a free app, and you go on there, and you make this lovely app, and it looks wonderful on the screen. And then there's this gotcha moment when they go, ah, but now if you actually want to download this and publish it to the App Store, you need to pay us so much money. Yeah. This site doesn't do that. What they Their business model is they say you can have the app for free, mm-hmm. provided at the bottom of your app there's a little, a little tiny little disclaimer that says built using iBuild app. Mm-hmm. And in at the top, in the say the top kind of ten pixels or so, you get little banner advertisements. So if people click on the advertisements in your app, yeah, they'll get the funding. Right. Okay. There are paid programs where you can pay them. I think it's round about um, twenty dollars or so a month. Yeah. Something like that. Um, where that you can have what's called a white label app. So they'll take off the iBuild app uh, little disclaimer at the bottom, and they'll remove the adverts at the top as well. And if you do that, you can actually then have your own adverts go in. So if, if people click on the adverts, you get the money instead. So it gives people a way of saying, I'm going to get into the app building um, kind of territory mm-hmm. with not, without putting much money down. And then if you kind of get a taste for it and you want to expand upon it, well, then you can like up the license uh, if you want to. But it's all kind of drag and drop. There's loads of templates to do. There is absolutely no coding required whatsoever. They do have the ability, you can build your own widgets, which you can then incorporate into apps. Right, okay. You do need to have a little bit of coding knowledge for that. Um, but the, the the trade-off is they then let you sell your widgets on their website for other iBuild app users to use. They've got like a little um, micro economy going on on the website oh, as well. Okay. But for most people who just want to make an app about something, yeah, um, it's fab. Um, and I made one over the weekend. And I, I mean, it's the first time I'd ever done anything like this. And... It took me two and a half hours from sitting down with nothing mm. to having a finished app on the Google Play Store. It was live two and a half hours. Okay. Um, That's pretty good. It was, it, it's ridiculous. Um, the, I mean, the other caveat to say is, obviously, Google and Apple do want some money. Mm. You have to pay... Um, Google is actually quite cheap. It's quite reasonable. It's something like 15 or £20, pounds, but that's a lifetime license. Oh, you pay good. them once, and that's it. Um, Apple, however, I have to say, um, not that happy with because they want 60 pounds a year a year year. wow okay 60 pounds a year Mm. um and also um you have to jump through it the actual process of getting the app ready is so convoluted yeah so with so with google it's dead simple because you just you make an account with them uh you know you fill in the form you upload some screenshots and it's 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 done no problem at all um the amazon app store i've just submitted my app to the amazon app store last night Mm -hmm. they actually let you submit it for free Oh, that's, do. Good. that's good. So that's even better. Um, and you can actually, Amazon have this thing where they do free app of the day and you can actually say, um, if you're giving your way, a- app away free anyway, you can still have it to be in the pool of apps that are highlighted on the app of the day. Right. So the kind of apps you can make with this kind of thing. So, so yeah, so, I mean, it's on Google now. I, I'm, I'm still not on um, the, the Apple uh, marketplace. Um, they came back to me saying there was a there was a bug in the software. So, yeah, so I think what's happened is uh, because I've been uh, basically, um, I made the app and I've been tinkering with it all week, how it essentially works is it gives you a web interface and the, the when people install the app on their smartphones, you can still update the app from the web interface and it will push out up new updates automatically. Okay. So if you if you go, oh man, I don't like that particular feature, you change it on the website and it just refreshes on the user's phone. But I think what the problem with Apple is was they're, they're, the way they work is they take a snapshot of the app as it was mm. and if you start tinkering with it, it then breaks. Right, okay. So, I think so they want you to have done everything in advance, literally to the point of I can't do any more before you even yes, start. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I wasn't... I wasn't, I wasn't I wasn't overly impressed with that one because they came back and said it's not working. So I've had to resubmit it again, but that's by the by. But the kind of apps you can make are essentially... Um, it, it, the website comes with a, a lot of predefined widgets, and you can put these widgets in any way you like. So you can say, okay, I'm going to have a main page, and that page can then link to things like electronic books, which you can write or copy and paste into the app itself. It can pull content in from web pages. Mm-hmm. It can pull content in from RSS feeds. It can pull content in from YouTube uh, feeds as well. So um, the kind of, see, for the, on radio it doesn't really work, but I'll, I'll 
um, essentially, so you've got things that you can have. So the other app I've made basically pulls together all of my content mm. from all over the internet and says to people, if you don't want to keep running around to Twitter and Tumblr and all this, that and the other, here's a little app that I've got, which has everything that's about me on here. And then whenever I update something, I can send a push notification out to people and say, I've just updated the app. And they can either cancel that push notification or go, okay, fair enough. And then it will take them into the app and they can play around with it. So it's got things like, um, is, there's also um, a really nice one. Um, you have like a feedback wall. So for example, schools and colleges and universities could use this app, uh, to could use, so, so, could use the, um, the, the app builder to make any number of apps for a particular course. Mm. Or, I mean, the, the thing that I'm kind of kicking around at the moment is when we have enrollment, there's an awful lot of information flying around at different different places. Mm. Schools and colleges and universities could make an app, a free app, using this thing with no money, any money at all, get it published to the Google Store. Okay, you'd need the developer licenses. But you could say to the students, download this app, and then everything you need for enrollment will be on here. Mm. And we'll push out notifications to your phone for free. The notifications are all free, saying... Oh, you know. By the way, uh, the, you know this building has just opened over here. We're ready to like take your photographs, or the you know the the, the waiting time for filling in the application form and on the queue that it's an hour and a half. It's mm. th that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it, it, I've never seen anything quite like it uh, because also all the others have have a gotcha moment. But it's called iBuildApp.com, free to sign up, free to build the app. And the other lovely thing is, it will generate a HTML5 version of your app for you for free. So even if you don't want to submit it to the Play Stores, you can give your your students, your learners, your pupils a link to the HTML5 page, and then it will display on a smartphone, mm. but as a HTML5 app, like a web app. So mm. you look, if you go like YouTube or something on your smartphone, you're not in the app, they actually go to the website. It changes it how it looks, doesn't it, to, to be on a smartphone. So you get that for free as well. So it's it's really good. Um, and say, I mean, as long as you don't mind having the little powered by iBuild app. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking, you've, Paul's got it up on the screen yeah. at the moment. And actually, it's fairly, you know, it's it's so small, it's, it takes up no space on the yeah, screen. It's actually, it's innocuous. Yeah, absolutely. And it's then not the, intrusive at all. No, and then the adverts, uh, they'll appear at the top here. But again, they're fairly innocuous as well. So yeah. as long as you don't mind that sort of thing, it's... Um, That's great. Because I think, we, you know, we've, we've talked about apps and stuff quite, quite a bit Um mm not just in the podcast, but over mm. the last few years. And I think it's always been a, something we've never really taken that next step to because mm. it's always seemed such a convoluted and complicated yeah. process. And actually, we got to that point and thought, it really isn't worth mm. the effort. But I mean, clear, you know, for two and a half two hours' and a half work, hours. Yeah. there doesn't seem like a huge no. amount of effort involved no, in, in not it at all. to make it look something very yeah. nice and very and easy the, to use. Basically, the, the, and most of that time was actually spent in using PicMonkey, which is a website we've talked about before for mm. photo editing, just cropping the images down to get them the right size. Mm. I mean, everything else, you just type it in. So actually the text was dead simple. It was just getting the images resized. Uh, but yeah, there's loads of, there's hundreds of free templates in there as well. So you can make an app for your club, uh, your sports team, your... I mean, I know Carl's got off like a, a film web, a, a film blog site. Mm. You could, if you wanted to, make a little app that pulls in all your blog posts and he does this ace thing called Trashy Trailers. Um, so <laughs> you could actually have a playlist of the Trashy Trailers on one section and your film reviews on another and... Well, I'm sat here thinking that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> quite frankly, that's a great idea. I, 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 I yeah. don't know. I've always been never been sure about apps that don't actually do anything. Mm. Like that—that's essentially an app that doesn't do anything. You mm. use it to access your site that Correct. exists already. Yes. Mm. So, like, if you were on a phone, that's just a waste of memory, isn't it? Like that—that that is an app taking up space oh, on your absolutely. phone, annoying you. But, I mean, I can see the point. If yeah, you've got yeah. a tablet at, or a student mm -hmm. who's new at university, then, yeah, maybe we do, like, a a temporary sort of app that only works during enrolment or mm. something. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, I think they're just a bit of a frustration. Unless it's a site that you use all the time and then you're on a tablet and, yeah, going back to your favourites all the time is is a annoyance. And that's why you use things like YouTube and Facebook, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the whole conversation is interesting because it seems to be about convergence. That's the... Pulling everything sort of together. Home yeah. grail, isn't it, of everything now? And that's what I guess why yeah. I disengaged. Going back to the conversation earlier, it's like, how do you pull this together now? Yeah. Yeah, that's the 
that's the thing I think we're all waiting for now because mm. it's getting so fractured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. touched on this uh, a couple of podcasts ago, and it was yeah. just myself and Elizabeth, and we mm. were talking about your kind of your online footprint and Trying how things just scatter things and how you together. connect all yeah. together. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, it ties in nicely. I can see doing it. Mm. Yeah, it's useful, and if somebody uses your like pauses for the, the e-learning mm. resources, if someone uses that on a regular basis, because I can see mm. like educators doing that, that it would be really handy to just refer back to. And yeah. Stuff. Mm. But, but actually, I mean, if, if no, because because I guess there's a lot of people. The other thing is to think about this is there's going to be a lot of people who'd love to have a go at creating an app. But I mean, are they then going to go through the process if they're just having a go at doing mm -hmm. it? Are they going to go through the process of all the paying for your Play Store and That's whatever it, else? Yeah. So actually, if, 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 if nothing else, I think it works nicely yeah. just as a tool to have a go Absolutely. at doing it. Yeah. But I think I there's mean, a lot of people who will create stuff, but it will never get beyond the no. point where they've just That's, had a go yeah, at creating it. This is it, purely so. my personal opinion. Yeah. That's like how I've always oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like functioned with apps and stuff. It yeah. just seems like it's an oddity. Mm. I mean, I'm interested in it because it's something we teach on the course I'm on, yeah. uh, is app development. Yeah, was it so using like Xcode or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll be using uh, even just things like the Adobe Suite, mm. which is kind of handy for that build, but it's still a, a marathon. Yeah. And it's still buggy. Yeah. So just to give students a, an option where they can try it out. It's yeah. like yeah. kind of the uh, iMovie rather than Final Cut. That's it, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Yes. I mean, the other thing it can be used is for almost like proof of concept type stuff. I mean, yeah. how I'm going to use it or how I want to use it, essentially, I want it, I, it always started off because what I wanted was a digital business card. Mm. That's where it kind of stemmed from. It was like, right, um, I've got I've got a business card, but I wanted something that was a bit a bit more handy because if people give me business cards now, I'll, I'll key in all the stuff onto the into my phone. So I wanted something I could say, look, everything I do is on this one app, and my contact details are on here. And when they call my contact details up, they actually push the button, and it will then phone me automatically mm. or email me automatically. So I just wanted everything to be in in one place. Um, but, but I'm talking to another company who um, they've been quoted two thousand pounds to develop an app. Mm. And I kind of did the maths for them, just because I, I know the di managing director. I said, well, look, cause you, you know, you've got options. Yes, you could pay £2,000 to get this app developed, but I worked out all the costs for them, and I subtracted the developer licenses. And after you take away the developer licenses, it left them with £1,915. And then I said, well, okay, if you were to then go on the white label option for this, for your iBuild app, you could pay that, the subscription fee, for eight years. Mm -hmm. To have the, uh, and the app wouldn't cost you anything, mm. and I said the chances are you'll have an app for a year or two, and then you'll need to d develop it again. And if it's been done by a developer, you've gone and got to pay them more money. Whereas with this setup, you just log onto the uh, the the website and tinker, and then push it out, and it's done. So I was like, you you know, it's it's all about economies of scale, I guess, in terms of you know what you want to do and how you want to do it. But in terms of kind of rapid app development and rapid app deployment, yeah. um, I, it's it's great. Okay, so we're going to move on now to our special guest, Don, who we, we mentioned at the start of the podcast. Um, and what we'd like to do, first of all, Don, is, is kind of get the guests to just tell us a little bit about themselves and, and what they do in their current job roles. So if, if I can kind of chuck it over to you and just say kind of what you do at the university and what your interests are. I'm a senior lecturer in advertising design at the university. I've been in that role, I think, six or seven years now. Uh, set up the course originally mm. from a, a document that was supplied, ran that for five years, mm -hmm. uh, and teach all sort of aspects of advertising from concept to completion, really, mm -hmm. uh, in various media. It's been an interesting journey in the last few years. Uh, as we started out, print was dominant, mm. and now we've moved much further away from that. It's in, in fact, even this year, it's fascinating. And my own career's changed from being a practitioner to research a lot of research now into behavior yeah and with that that's been uh, kind of running parallel to how the industry is changing it's quite to me fascinating at the moment it's the best time to be in advertising for probably 20 years so that's kind of where i'm at with what i'm doing at the moment in without going on for about four hours i guess <laughs> right. and and kind of going kind of a, a step back we, we myself and elizabeth were actually browsing your website earlier and uh, looking at some of, of your mm -hmm. some of your past work yeah we will put details on uh, a link on mm -hmm. but not maybe t maybe not till don's updated <laughs> it a little bit no, but uh, perhaps you could kind of just uh, take a step back from the university to say what you you've kind of some of the stuff you've done previously, oh, previously. yeah yeah sure because um, it's interesting stuff and i think well, we'll i can go about educationally and then sort of bring it in it's like the spit spiel isn't it uh, when I left uni, I had a degree in design, and then I went into the I went into the music industry, did mm. six years there, and did about 400 album covers, mostly independent uh, record labels, mm -hmm. so 
film soundtracks, jazz, classical. Mm -hmm. uh, I tended to avoid the rock and pop. Mm. Um, why, I don't know. It's just kind of a, a choice. Mm -hmm. My brother was art director at the Ministry of Sound. Right, okay. So we kind of had all that covered in the 90s. Uh, and then moved on. Where did I go from there? I went to the corporate sector with agencies such as Wolf Olins. So I worked on Orange, the original branding for that, mm. QA Oil, um, and or quite a lot of other things. Mm. And from there, moved out of that into uh, film industry. Yeah. And that's where I did the film advertising. Because my, my yeah, background's yeah. from that's yeah, the bit yeah, that particularly yeah, we, caught my interest when I was looking on your yeah. site. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that was really, that was kind of bizarre. And, and one of the, I think a million and one stories about that. But uh, uh, Captain Carolelli's Mandolin, Ali G, About a Boy, Amelie. Moulin Rouge, I'm trying to think of them now. Uh, Star Trek Nemesis. Yes. Yeah. Um, Bond, one of the Bond films. Uh, was Diamond it Die Another Day, Day, I think it was. Diamond That's right. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. Got, I've got to admit, I could go on about it. <laughs> it sounds all rather glamorous, but it was quite difficult work. Um, Red Dragon, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then from there, went into Cartoon Network and uh, television uh, advertising, mm. business B2B, mm. mostly business to business, and, and some commercial work from there. And then slowly sort of moved into being an academic, which is the strangest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, which is where you find yourself yeah, now. Yeah, yes, absolutely. At this very moment in time. Absolutely. I'm guessing along the way you've come across a huge number of technologies that kind of, uh, and, and obviously you've been doing this sort of role for a while, yeah. so the technology have changed quite a lot as well. Mm. Yes, I can go back to uni days. Sorry to interrupt. Mm, no, no, it's but fine. It's, uh, we had, I remember being a student in, uh, and uh, the, we had an Apple Classic, was the first thing that appeared uh, free uh, used page ma oldest page maker mm. i think it was the first version of page maker and literally you know i remember doing my final year project which was a cd cover or several actually uh, for it funny enough uh, ian banks the wasp factory oh okay yeah, yeah he's yeah. got i did a I, he's got it on his uh, wall in his office uh, uh. With, with Photography I did, which is bizarrely enough. I've, I've literally just finished yeah, reading that book. Yeah. I hadn't read it before. I've just finished reading it. Yeah, he's not going to be with us. No, before, sadly not. Yeah. No. So anyway, that's another story. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I remember kind of playing around with that. And there was a friend of mine who'd been a typesetter, and he was a mature student, and he'd he'd been using computers, so he, he knew the technology. So with floppy disks and all that originally. Mm. Uh, and fast forwarding it, it, how it changed the music industry I started out doing vinyl and stuff like that and then by the time I left with CDs where I could see the CD uh, change happening yeah. uh, and so I, I decided that was the end of that and then with the film industry that's changed rapidly mm -hmm. and there was, there was a period where it wasn't really uh, you, you didn't know it was very ambiguous like most um, industries it was a lot of people were going out graphic design sort of became cheaper in a way and, mm -hmm. and less valued and advertising did for a while i think right now you're talking about that journey of technology mm. and i keep saying that right now it's just beginning to become valued again yes and uh, so you know i've spent the years doing a lot of and the research i've been doing into sort of people's behavior has reflected that and how social networks have changed our sort of perception of, of the media and technology and um now it's like I think it's really a good time for me where I am to get back into doing some practice as well. So kind of looking at that. So, but all technology based, hopefully. Right. So ignore the website and. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing. I've been finishing my PhD, so I haven't looked at it. And I literally, I'm going to use WordPress, and you can damn me all you like. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's like, oh, that's work. That works, you know. From Dreamweaver to WordPress, um, yeah. and I think that the technology has moved where it's. I, I use the analogy of cars, um, you know, like uh, years ago, you used to have to be able to repair your own car. Mm -hmm. Now, like, my car's a Golf at the moment, and, and it's just units that you just swap in and out. You don't need to know as much as you did, yeah. mm -hmm. but you still know you need to have to drive a car. And I think it's like, you still need to be a technologist, I think, personally, but you need to sort of let go of that deep mm -hmm. understanding of coding and things. I've yeah. Moved a long way from, I had a ZX80. Mm. I built one and programmed it mm. you know, way back in what's that, late, early 80s? Early 80s, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, ZX80, duh. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not that bright. <laughs> and, um, and, and to go from that to where you are as a kind of an end user now, I think mm. it's a really um, interesting experience. But I think you should also learn a bit of the sort of the back end as mm. well, personally. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, and that's, again, that's kind of touched on something we've talked about before about the kind of 
the lack of coding knowledge in the schools mm-hmm. and people coming yeah. from schools and pe- we we talked about um you know when 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 students talk about them having an IT background it's because they use Microsoft Office yes. and they assume that they've they know IT because they mm. use well, it's like Office handwriting. So. We're talking about handwriting. I mean, my handwriting is like you know quite old fashioned sort of copper plate. You know, it's, it's illegible to most students now. You know. It, yeah, you know, they all use sort of rounded. Yeah, sort yeah. Of I looks mean, like my, my, mine's literally old school. You know, yeah. And you know, I came from that world. We said letters and everything. I got them off. <laughs> and and but uh, what I I was sort of in that transitional period with education where I think we should be taught touch typing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if ch- children are now. Are they talk. No. no. I mean, why aren't we taught touch typing? I mean, it's just yeah. Because you, know, you just learn to type before they can get to you. Mm, I think mm, now. Yeah. Well, we didn't when I was yeah. a kid. I learned yeah. to type quickly from using Yahoo Chat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> touch typing. But I don't touch type. I use like um, two fingers, two maybe mm. three fingers yeah, yeah. on each hand. I've actually learned there's a, there's an app somewhere that you sort of sit yeah. in front of mm. it. You know, when you're writing, it's still quite slow. But I think that those sort of things and um, that sort of uh, understanding of code, file sizes, mm. what a megabyte is. Teach that to undergraduates. You know, that's the first thing they do. What a, what a vector is, what a bitmap is. Mm. You know, the, the basic building blocks of what yeah. know, the world we live in, yeah, I think, yeah. are fundamental. I don't I mean, think you need to learn to know how to code in everything or no. web code or no, everything. No, to know about computers, I think, yeah, that would be a huge advantage yeah. for a lot of people. We get people, they don't understand why, you know, something's not working. And it's like your computer is not even connected to the Wi-Fi. And they're like, oh, I thought it just happened. <laughs> yeah, or, magic. You know, why <laughs> doesn't this happen? And it's like, because it can't do, it's not magic. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't just... <laughs> But no, but it, it but it is yeah. to a lot of people, isn't it? You're, you're absolutely yeah, it spot might on. as well I mean, be. Yeah, absolutely. They, for, as far as anybody, as far as a lot of people know, they switch a computer on, everything's connected to what it needs to be connected to, and they just click a button and they're on the internet. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's like so if it that. doesn't work, they've got to call the magician who comes and makes it work. Mm-hmm. And it's like if you just have a tiny bit of like mm-hmm. learning, yeah. and mm-hmm. you you might be able to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And mm. I think that's it's, it's where we go next. It's really uh, the, the the business. I mean, to get back to that, the, the mm. advertising world. Um, brief history: you used to have an art director and a copywriter. They were the you worked as a team, yeah. and mm. you create concepts and things like that. Mm. And very potted history, and you get other people to create this vision with you and the client. Uh, right now, there's some companies that I'm sort of pointing the students towards. One called Digitas, which is um, really Digitas. I think they've moved to something else at the moment. And they have uh, now they have a, a creative and a developer that work closely together mm. now. And Adobe's really I'm not plugging Adobe mm. at all. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, they're just I think they're the new Apple personally. I think their their strategy is really interesting at the moment. Well, they've just moved everything into the cloud, yeah. haven't they? And, yeah. and just the way you purchase their stuff, mm. the way it's integrated, it should have happened God ten years ago. Mm. Uh, and that strategy now with developer and creative to me is the. The next phase, I really think that's that's. I think that's a b- yeah key team happen. like key mm. yeah and, and and because the developer we used to have a guy we used to work with um, and if he's he ever listens to this it'll be strange, uh, Pixel Pete we used to call him he was mm. like this <laughs> web guy in the corner mm. and you just paid him a lot of money and just threw things at it's like mm-hmm. you should have an equal footing now and it's and it's a wonderfully creative opportunity mm. and I think that's yeah. where we're going so I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of technology yeah, mm. yeah. I just think about um, was it, I had to look it up but Arthur C. Clarke had his three has three laws of prediction and law number three was any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic oh yeah <laughs> and, and it's and it's like and we are at a stage now where we, you know you have it's almost you've got like tiers of society and those people who have that deep understanding know, know how it works mm. but I think for the you know, I used to be like a, a statistician. If you got like a, a normal distribution curve, I mm. think for the for the large lump in the majority uh, people, it is kind of getting to that stage where it's like, well, I don't know how it works. It's just mm. Mm. It's, it's interesting because I grew up with uh, you know from Pong mm-hmm. to Space Invaders mm-hmm. and through you know playing those games, and we were just desperate to know how it worked. Yeah, you know, and there is uh, in my generation a group of people who really you know lift up the bonnet and get that analogy and get in there Mm. and I still do that Um, and I expected that uh, as you know waves of generations Mm -hmm. come up behind you to get even more Mm. into that and it seems to actually be less Mm. I think it's well I'm not speaking for everybody no I think I think the point when it stops certainly with the school kids is when they stop teaching logo in schools that was the that that was the turning point I mean because I mean I, I was of the generation where 
four years old, uh, I'm presented with a BBC, yeah, uh, BBC micro, yeah. 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 yeah, and a little turtle with a pen, and then a big ribbon that went from the turtle yeah. to the computer, and it was revolutionary. You could type commands into this computer, and it would draw stuff on the floor. Mm. And from there, I went on to basic, and from mm. basic, I then it went on to something. Yeah, called... but it built with you. You've got to think mm. with the kids now. They the are they really. are coming down from the top of a much bigger mountain yeah, than you were. True. So. Maybe they're not learning how to program a computer, mm. but they're making apps. Kids are making apps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kids are making websites. But like not... most of them will have a YouTube channel, yes. Facebook, a thing. You know, they're they're doing all those yes. things that you would never have no. done. So they are engaging. But not with technology. as a result of the education system. They're doing it because they want to do it. It's not. Yeah. It's not something that's like we're going to teach you how to read, write. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's, it's not, not the ho- not from uh, here's a zero. Here's yeah. A one. Mm. And and we're, by the time you're 20, you know, you are you know, your brain's going to hum and you're going to glow green. Yeah, because you can float off the ground <laughs> like something <laughs> like the Matrix. Thing. I think I think it's 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 uh, to me the, the some of the rules of education need slightly altering. And you listen to Gove and people going on, you think I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but you need those building blocks. Let's establish those. Like you know, if we're all using computers, I think most of us do. Mm. Keyboards are still a thing, uh, even you mm-hmm. know, soft yeah. keyboards. Um, how many people are taught touch typing? That, to me, mm. way back, if you go back, in fact, uh, some of our colleagues who are leaving, I, I found out the other day, Margaret, who's the vice chancellor's, um, I think, uh, secretary. Yes, yes. She's been here 42 years. Yeah. And she started out in the typing pool. Mm. We used to have a typing pool. Mm. And you used to go and give your work to someone, and they, they were the people who could mm. key in. And it's like... You know, although we've moved to our own ownership of that now, and good or bad or whatever, indifferent, I think we should, you know, if, you, if you're using machines, why aren't we all doing that? Mm. Oh, it won't last much longer, though. Google are bringing in um, conversational search. Mm. Really? So you don't yeah. just, you don't have to say Google search yeah. and then give the exact words. You say, OK, Google, what's the weather going to be like in California tomorrow? Oh, yeah. And how about Minnesota? Mm. And how about in three days' time? And mm. you just you chat, and it recognizes it. Yeah, it's better than Siri, then, right? Apparently, yeah. so. I'm, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's exactly yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just it, it, you, <laughs> yeah. you feel ludicrous stood with your phone in your hand, going which way to, and, and having to sort of yeah. really mm. speak. American yeah, I absolutely. I think given that Siri came first, they're going to have made it a bit shinier course, than that. Yeah, They've not released it yet, but they announced it at their I/O conference a little oh. while ago, mm. um, and they gave like some little demonstrations and said what it's going to do and it looks really exciting basically it's going to be Star Trek mm-hmm. this, is, is, mm-hmm. this is one of my favourite I, I, we might ramble off here but that favourite one of my favourite scenes in any film is uh, Scotty in the Star Trek Voyage Home mm-hmm. and they said oh you have to use a mouse he goes oh how quaint and he picks up the mouse and he goes and he speaks into <laughs> yeah. the yeah. computer yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and he goes no you have to <laughs> yeah. and goes, what really yeah. I mean obviously you don't always want to speak so there's going to be typing <laughs> yeah. but like um, sure. My Android did an update the other day, and now I have the sliding touch mm-hmm. type. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah, you don't have to lift your finger off to go to different letters, oh, so it yeah. just pulls the I, words out it, from it, where you're it moving your keys around. Confuses me, something terrible. <laughs> and it, it just picks out the thing, the word it reckons you're you're trying to write. You immediately want to learn it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you I do, must play. but you do get RSI in your finger. I, oh, I yeah. actually have it. I've got a thing about that. Um, uh, recently, uh, with the iPhone five. Uh, I've been getting strain in my uh, joint on my yeah. uh, mm. thumb, and I couldn't work out what it was. I thought, hang on a minute, oh god, here we go. It's going to be uh, what's the word? Um, arthritis. Mm-hmm. But what I realised was the iPhone five is slightly taller. <laughs> straining. Mm. And I'm straining yeah, to go like that. Yeah. So yeah. I, I turn my phone around. So that is not ergonomic to me. I don't mm. know yeah. about you, Paul, with this. That seems to be yeah. your um, machines are what uh, Samsung. Something. Samsung. Yeah. It's about the same size. About the same yeah. size. Yeah. And do you find that? reach yeah no i started to get it um really badly to the point mm. where i couldn't like mm. pull my um, my thumb no. and my forefinger together and then i started i stopped using yeah. my phone in the same way yeah, and yeah, had yeah. to use that like my forefinger yeah. and then i started using that and then i got really bad pains <laughs> up my finger so i had to like <laughs> strap it straight so i wasn't <laughs> i've turned the phone around now and, I, and it's like to me the crucial and i don't know where we go with the conversation apologies no sorry we'll piece. go back <laughs> But um, with with there's some simple user interfaces. We're talking about engagement with machines mm. really, in any shape or form. And I think with the the, the, the iPhone itself, the, when you do that, the apps don't turn around. Mm. Why don't the apps turn around? Why mm. why are they so? If it's when it's in portrait mode, 
Oh, it's in landscape mode. Why doesn't it all turn around so mm. I can use it that way around? Does yeah. it not? No. My phone does. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's an Android. It's, it's but... primitive. It's yeah. like, hello. Oh, we'll yeah. all be using Google Glass soon enough. Yeah. Oh, Google yeah. Glass oh, soon yeah. enough. Have you seen I the, was um, watching a thing about that. Oh. <laughs> Have you seen the guy who goes on a date? Have you seen the spoof one? No. Have you seen, there's a great spoof one where he's talking to this woman and, and he's, he, you know, he's, he's, we assume he's the quintessential geek. Mm. Right? Well, me personally. <laughs> and, he, and he's sitting there and he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what's your favourite? And she says something. He goes, okay, Google the... Like that. And he gives his list of things. He goes, yeah, so in that episode, did you like like, like that? And, and then, <laughs> then he looks, sort of looks at the chest and goes, take a photo. Like that. Goes, what did you say? <laughs> nothing, nothing, uh, nothing. And it's just like you can see immediately why this thing will get banned within yeah. about three minutes. Yeah. You know? and kind of, you know, rightly so in a way. You're permanently on. Yeah. You know? mm, yeah, they're talking about the discussions that, that need to happen. It's not about the technology. It's about privacy exactly. and, yeah. and exactly. social. I think, yeah. I think that's what this, this, that's what's missing from a lot of this this ethical sort of approach to things now and I think why I disengage from the social mm. space it's like uh, being an academic or a, a teacher for want of a, a better way of looking at it that I, I see this sort of uh, doctor patient sort of approach to mm. students and I don't want to engage in their social space and, mm. and they keep going oh why aren't you my friend it's like I'm not your, I'm not your mm. friend you yeah. know I, I am this is I'm an academic, you you know, would you be friends with your doctor online? Probably not. Yeah, uh, we do talk a lot about engaging with students yeah. on social media and stuff, but that is the other side of the yeah, argument. Yeah, like, yeah. you you do have to draw a line between the yeah. personal and the professional yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I think that's it's difficult, and I've just sort of disengaged from the whole process at the moment. So, it'd be interesting. This, this, this is a complex thing, but I don't mm. know where we're going. Sorry, Carl. Yeah. Just no. One question. <laughs> no, 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 say, no, go, <laughs> let's go back to um, advertising, because oh, yeah. I think with... It feels like on the internet, like advertising pretty much runs it because everything on the internet, the point is that the majority of the stuff is free. That's mm. what like everyone loves. You know, you don't use stuff unless it's free. So you use Facebook and you use Twitter and you use Tumblr and you use all the YouTube and it's all free, but it's obviously all powered by advertising. Mm. And they were saying if something's free, it's not that you're not being sold something. You're the thing being sold. It's interesting because I've been I've been watching this for some time now, and I think there's an approach to advertising, and it's uh, advertising is changing. The word advertising to me is getting a bit old. I use I tend to use the word integrated marketing communications, mm. IMC mm. now, and I, I've used that, and I'm sort of starting to supplant that in my sort of dialogue. Mm -hmm. The first approach is uh, there's two things: uh, the freemium thing. Yeah. which is going on. Yeah. Uh, the greatest one at the moment for me is there's a Simpsons game. You can play Tap, it. Tapped out? Tapped out. Yeah. Oh, my God, my husband loves that. Yeah, that to me is a perfect example of how to start people to engage to buy. Um, mm. It's sort of this freemium, and if you don't know it, it's just you get the free game for a minute, and then you have to buy bits and pieces mm. to extend your sort of uh, experience. Mm. I think that's, that's one part. They call it freemium. Uh, and I'm very interested in that. The other part is I think a lot of these companies, the YouTubes, um, Especially YouTube this week, mm. uh, uh, Facebook, maybe Google very soon, is that they've uh, used a kind of slash what they call a slash and burn technique for um, their approach to their business model, and that was developed kind of by what was it Starbucks? Mm. Mm. Starbucks did it in the 90s on physical sites where they let's take uh, I know London has a personal example, mm -hmm. and there was a Starbucks on every corner. I don't know yeah. if anybody remembers that, and there was a deliberate ploy to drive everybody else out of business. Then they'd shut down three of the four and keep one. Mm. And that's a sort of slash and burn policy mm. of, of business building. And now with advertising, I think we're less about making, well, we're still about making adverts. It's, mm. it's one strand of what we do. And it's now you're much more of a blended experience for, for everybody. Um, again, Digitas is a good exp uh, example. If you go onto Adobe TV and just Google Digitas, uh, search uh, digital for mm. advertising mm. and it's it's that strategy that i think is really coming out and it's that's the future of advertising in my my humble opinion yeah. mm -hmm. i would i wanted to ask you kind of going off on a slight tangent but still talking I about advertising <laughs> um <laughs> something that something that I, i'm really interested in and, and it's kind of the whole um in terms of advertising the whole augmented reality oh. and orasma and stuff like that and i i it's, it's great i mean it's fairly basic orasma at the moment the free version mm. yeah, but, yeah. but the stuff it can do is is great i just wondered if you had any experience of that area or if you knew whether that was an area perhaps that is are things going in that direction oh. a bit more or uh, a lot more or? Mm. Um, in fact uh, it's kind of weird you start to see that as old news actually yeah um, yeah it's about two 
two years ago that really the augmented thing really kicked off. Yeah, I mean, certainly Orasma's been going for a yeah. good few years yeah. now, absolutely. We've played around with a lot of it, and we've done sort of little experiments way back, but even recently, um, there's the uh, pop-up stores, which went on, uh, Airwalk did one uh, in New York, it's, it's what I use, and that was really interesting, where for the augmented reality, they set up a pop-up store in New York in a kind of area of, mm -hmm. uh, like a park, and they only had it open for like an afternoon or a lunchtime. And they told everybody it was going to be there. And then you just had your phone and you pulled up your, um, your, your phone and you could see it like a giant trainer in space. Right. And it was only there and then you could get the deal on these particular <laughs> trainers. Uh, so that was a really see, nice yeah. little mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's great fun, but it's, it's again, it's this integrated approach. I find them that they only really work if you link up with another strategy mm. and uh, there's some really great stuff going on about that now um there's there's a few that um you would explore i mean the one i keep going is quite old now uh the nine inch nails one that they did where they linked up every every piece of strategy you can you possibly imagine the last album was about three four years ago mm. if not longer and they had things like their usb keys that they threw into the bathrooms and that had a code on it the t-shirt had some bold letters that gave you a link to a website saying I am trying you I'm trying to believe and they had a deep uh, relationship with the fan where they had like 50 websites that all kind of linked mm. and then if you did that you'd have to find a phone somewhere and they had a secret gig and you know all that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah, is yeah. what's going on now and that's to me all the fun stuff and the, the augmented reality is a part of that mm. and I've seen it work effectively when it's kind of a a focused um, mm. piece of the strategy yeah. and that's really good fun but the pop-up stuff I've seen it on some commercial like newspapers yes um, yeah yeah uh, and that's really good like a watch commercial uh, about a year ago I think it was um, Amiga did it and mm. you could pick it out and it was sort of mechanics of the watch I think it's really a mm. sweet thing I think you've got to be careful that when you do do that you don't exclude all of the audience because yeah. a lot of people are not really into this you, you, no. you've got to be targeting it for right the right yeah. audience great fun we, yeah. we, but we we do say in, in a lot of the advertising we do now as a joke you got an app for that you know mm. like everybody else it's like do we, do we really need an app mm. for that right now uh, mm. and, and the augmented reality thing if it's targeted like a pop-up store yeah or it's using an invisible space mm. uh nike run the street uh, they did some stuff with that where they you know you had your phone and you know the kind of mapping exercise mm -hmm. They did that with a website uh, here and in Amsterdam, and you and they got people going on these the runs against the clock with the uh, what's the air the Nike in shoe. Oh yeah, I can't what it's called now. The, the yeah, someone will tell me yeah. Air Plus or something mm. like that. I probably got that wrong. And, and uh, they were doing things like you could draw a shape if you could pick up a shape like the Nike mm. swoosh or a skull, uh, and you could run this shape. You know, and people were different people would try and connect the dots and <laughs> beat each other to phone boxes and just I'm, check it I'm out. I'm just chuckling because I kind of know <laughs> what kind of shapes people might draw. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. Because yeah. there was a yeah, great yeah. article, uh, I think it was yesterday it came out, that NASA were really embarrassed because the, the Mars the rover had yeah. drawn a picture of something which is a family podcast. We can't tell you what it is, yeah, yeah. but it I wasn't guess. it wasn't very family friendly. <laughs> but it was completely by accident. They yeah. kind of they'd done it and they just took a camera shot. They're like, oh no, <laughs> so completely by accident. Yeah, that's that's what they say. Yeah. Are there any? Um, I mean, are there any particular kind of uh, bits of software, kind of tools, technologies that you you use? to make your life easy with the, with the day job that you do. With students? Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's one you gave me, Paul, was the, uh, I still use it, was, uh, is it Join Me? Yep, yeah. Yeah, Join Me, uh, which is, is a great, uh, when, when the system doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. But uh, any, anything like that, they, they, yes, there, there's some important pieces of technology specifically for teaching I'd like to see more of that don't exist. Mm. Yeah. Um, the other thing you might want to check out, there's a lovely site called Screen Hero. Right. And it's like Join Me, uh -huh. but the difference is it gives every user their own mouse cursor. Oh my goodness. So if you're so you so you can basically and you can have control, <laughs> oh. you know, but you can actually say it, it probably wouldn't work for a big class, but yeah. for small groups, small teams, you can actually talk to people and they can kind of move their mouse over stuff and go, Well what's yeah, what's yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And then you give them control and they can start doing mm. stuff and you can go, hang on a second, you've missed that bit. Yeah, that, that's key. I mean, uh, I know we all do like podcasts mm. and, uh, you know, you can do like YouTube follow me's kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, or walkthroughs as I call them. Mm. And 
it it's kind of that's what needs to happen more is that action engagement you know it's like speak about something quickly get them to do it before all this you'd have pens papers and god knows absolutely what, and you, yeah you engage and, mm. and funny enough i've just been doing some teaching at an advertising agency they got me in for a day just to do a sort of you know starting mm. off thing uh went down to london to do that and um they were really interested in that kind of engagement and the guy who's the the creative director richard he um he actually um he, he trained the same age as me to draw mm. and so he goes to a lot of these meetings and draws yeah and everybody else finds that a wonderful rare thing yeah. it's like well i just you know did a few things yeah. like that. it's a it was a banana at the Eiffel hotel whatever. Mm. and and trying to get that back in mm -hmm. is what we need to do it's like if we could get that group think mm. we actually went to in. a conference in lincoln mm. where they were talking about uh, a load of videos that they did mm. teaching the students to draw. Mm -hmm. Was it for an architecture or yeah, it was yeah some yeah. kind of design yeah. or architecture yeah, thing? Yeah, and yeah. Um, they have to be able to do it. They said it went out for ages and mm. now it's come back as a skill. Mm. And all the people who teach it were retiring, mm. Mm. so they recorded all these videos mm. like really close up with mm. the how to draw, mm. how to mm. put mm. everything on the grid and yeah, yeah. whatever. Well, that's what I was taught yeah. like, you know. And I'm I'm 44. I don't mind saying that at all. Mm. And it's it's there's a generational gap where people mm. are not being taught to draw. Mm. Yeah. And it's like once I, you know, croak, it's going to be like, well, how, are we, we're not passing those skills now. Mm. No. And it's like, you know, that there's, there's some, you know, wonderful things that we can start engaging with. I was just thinking when you're talking about bump and, you know, various bits mm. of technology earlier on. Uh, if, if we could all sort of co-draw or mm. I draw, you draw and share that, you know, yeah. it would be a, a, you know, that's what we used to call yeah. it easels. Well, yeah. it's the it thing. went out of fashion big time. That was, that was, my, sorry, no. that was my, my change from, I, mm. I trained as an illustrator. I actually tell you, I, I spent like, you know, weeks in the life room for, for years. Mm. That's what I did. And then when I graduated, I, I wanted to work, the holy grail when I was a student was to work for the, on the Radio Times, mm. <laughs> doing illustrations in pen and ink mm. or lino cut. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I trained a lot to do that and etching and things mm. like that. That's what I trained to do at uni. Yeah. And then literally my last year, the Mac turned up and you knew, <laughs> literally as I graduated, the Radio Times just... just it just went yeah mm. and there was no no one wanted you to draw anymore mm. so i had to retrain mm. to use computers and ironically yeah. what we're yeah. 20 years later now yeah. i mean the, the you, things that draw. might be useful to you I mean, google docs has a, a collaborative drawing package on there okay I which is which is fab and it works in the same way as you something to listening to this and saying it's been out for years <laughs> Dom. <laughs> um and the other thing is which is which is kind of new um is that google have you know they've got google hangouts and you can have yeah, hangouts yeah, on yeah, air yeah, yeah, well big. this week they just uh, released the ability for people to actually share their desktops so you could in theory have let's say several students mm. and each of their desktops is like a little video feed at the bottom mm. Mm. and then you you kind of hand over control mm. to them and then oh, their great. little video feed becomes the main one and yours goes down to the bottom oh, again yeah, so kind of yeah google hangouts and um and combined with google uh, docs or google drive mm. drawings might be something you want to have a play around because with. i've kind of yeah i will because i've been off the the the, the sort of circuit i mm. suppose for a little while and getting back into it we've got a student uh second year she's uh going over to dallas she's mm. got a uh, like an internship with uh, the one show yeah it's not the tv show mm. it's an advertising thing mm. America. <laughs> and uh, she's going over there and she got the the whole thing was run through uh google what's it called google google yeah. hangouts or google, google hangouts yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It's circles Google Hangouts, mm. the whole thing was organised around that. Yeah. And then she's getting out for an internship, paid flights, paid food, paid accommodation, mm. working with some of the greats in advertising. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I'm really supporting that. I think she's going out like next week or something. Mm. And that's all from that sort of s space. Yeah. Again, I think that's a coming back full circle to that social media mm. conversation. Mm. It's um, when it's sort of applied in a in a in a focused way, it's really amazing. That's when it mm -hmm. the world comes alive for me. Yeah, yeah it really does. I think it's mm. great. Okay, well, I think we've come to a natural conclusion for, for this week's podcast. So so all that's left really is to, first of all, say thank you very much to Don for coming along and talking to us. It's been really, really interesting. So thank you very much, Don. Yeah. 
Uh, and thank you very much to Paul and Elizabeth as well again for if we're inputting um, into into this week's conversation. I think we've got some really useful points and some great stuff to direct people to on the website so that they can have a play and see see what works yeah, for them. No so worries. again, yeah. thanks very much, guys. Uh, yeah, and finally, thank you very much for me. And uh, hopefully, we'll catch you again next week.